we're all uh, there for our charity baseball practice. You know, it's one of those mornings we all get up at 5.30 to come out and enjoy each other's company. And uh, we do it for a great cause and never had a problem. We were standing at home plate waiting to take batting practice, and a guy walked up to the third base uh, fence line uh, behind the uh, behind the screen, the uh, the uh, fencing, and began to fire. Um, he had an automatic weapon, uh, not an automatic weapon, a semi-automatic uh, automatic rifle. Um, he fired the first round, kind of shocked everybody. No one knew what was going on. We all hit the ground, but no one could go anywhere. No one could go anywhere because we were <clears throat> stuck uh, inside the fence line. There was only one way out. And the guy had uh, strategically placed himself so that he was looking across the field right at the edge, knowing full well that that's where we were headed. And uh, the only reason, and I'm telling you this as sure as I'm standing here right now, the only reason why we made it out of there alive was because Steve, Steve Scalise had his detail there who rounded the corner at the precise moment they, they needed to, came without any questions at all, began to fire and give us cover to seek shelter. And we, we were able to slither out of there, um, crawling on our hands and knees and, and, uh, and trying to find cover. That was the only reason we got out is because we had someone else with a weapon there who could fire back. Just uh, a shocking account from you and so many other people who were there. Uh, Senator Rand Paul was telling ABC News just a few moments ago that he credited uh, Representative Scalise's security detail for saving ground. lives, and apparently one of them was even wounded while they were returning fire. Yes, that's true. I, I watched. I was right there. I've got blood on my shoes. I don't even know whose blood this is, but uh, someone got hit near me. The the, the, the Bullets were coming right over us and hitting the, the dugout and the fence, you know, that ting, ting, ting along the fence. Uh, it was just, just horrifying, the, the sound. Uh, and, you know, my prayers go to the folks that were hit. Steve, we had a staffer that was hit in the chest, um, another staffer that was hit um, in, the, in the ankle. Uh, I know that uh, some of the detail uh, were hit, at least five people that I know of, um, that I saw personally were hit. And, um, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for the courage that they showed to, to return fire and, and, and save us because otherwise this guy uh, this guy was hunting us and he would have taken every one of us out if it had not been for this uh, these brave men and women who stepped up to protect us. It's just chilling to think about it and this is just to describe to people who may not be familiar with it this was practice for Republicans for charity baseball tournaments Yes, every year we play in a, in a charity baseball tournament. Republicans, Democrats play each other in kind of a, an opportunity to just kind of put politics aside and, and play for a charity for youth charities in, in the area. We raised a, almost a million dollars this year for it. It's just a, a great way to, to help people. And we've never had a problem. You know, this is such a peaceful thing that we do. Uh, ironic that they picked this as their target, but, but they did. How many people would you say were there when this happened? Well, there were about 20 of us on the field, standing right there, 40 yards away from, uh, from the shooter, standing right there as, as uh, he began to fire. He could have hit any one of us, any any one of us. How many um, shots were fired, if you had to I guess? Can't tell you. I, I can't tell you. He reloaded uh, magazine after magazine. Mm. This went on for, for a long time. It seemed like an eternity. But he had uh, a lot of ammo, and he was using all of it. And one... Uh, uh, congressional leader was describing it as about 10 minutes. I, I can't even imagine what that would be like, 10 minutes of this going on. How did you escape? Well, so here's the deal. He was on the one side of the fence of the fencing. We were, we, were, we got over to the first baseline. There was no cover there. We couldn't get in the dugout because he was firing. And uh, we finally got in the dugout uh, and then we were able to escape outside. But he was making his way around the home plate behind the fencing to come to our side, mm. and he was going to he was going to take out every single one of us because there was no place for us to run. And again, the only reason why we got out of there was because someone returned fire. It really is unbelievable when you think about that, and and I also understand that. Uh, there were a number of members, obviously, of, of Congress who were there, but that Representative Brad Westrup, who is an Iraq War veteran and a surgeon, actually gave aid to the House Majority Whip, Steve Scalise, after he was shot. That's there, right. He was on the field with him. 
And were other people trying to, you know, bandage wounds? I mean, kind of describe how people were responding once they saw that some people were injured. Well, there are people down uh, all around, uh, you know, and some with greater injuries than others. All of us trying to figure out who to go to first. And, you know, just trying to, you know, my heart goes out to Steve because we couldn't get to him. He was out in the field. He, they, they knocked him down. He knocked, was knocked down out by second base, and we just couldn't get to him. He was out there all by himself during this ordeal. And, uh, you know, I, it's, uh, it's tragic. I, I, this is something that uh, will never leave my mind. Uh, fortunately, we have um, were able to to walk away from it. Uh, but uh, boy, it, it changed everything you know in a millisecond. Absolutely, and I know Senator Rand Paul was describing after uh, Representative Scalise was hit, he literally was trying to drag himself into the outfield uh, as if you know maybe that would have given him you know more distance or something. But this was a situation where I understand it sounded like a semi-automatic weapon was being used. Uh, it was definitely a semi. I don't know what what size rifle it was. I, I can tell you it was definitely a, a, a rifle. I looked right at him. How would you so, describe uh, the gunman? How would you describe him? White male. That's all I can tell you. That's all I could really discern at that point. Uh, I saw him very calmly standing there with the rifle. I, that's what I was thinking at the time. He just looked calm. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, this is just a matter of fact thing. Did it look like he was only targeting politicians, or were there also civilians there? Because I understand this is near a YMCA, and there are a lot of people that time of day who are, you know, walking their dogs out exercising. Did it look like only politicians were being targeted here? No, it's a very pleasant area of Virginia. Um, that uh, you know, there's dog park right there. People walk and they enjoy it. It's such a beautiful morning here in Washington D.C. It's uh, it's you know, it's just a very serene, beautiful morning. Great day to enjoy the outside. Um, and so there were people walking about, milling about. And this has certainly sent shock waves throughout Washington and, of course, across the country. Uh, latest report is that security is being beefed up uh, around the White House and that they're clearing out the area in front of the Capitol building right now, bringing in extra security. Um, what are your plans for the rest of the day? I'm sure, you know, investigators will be wanting to talk with all of the witnesses there. But right. at this point, what is it that you need to do? Well, we're actually right now being taken in through uh, into the office building. Uh, I'm not sure what to expect what to expect next, but there's um, they're 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 moving us all right now as, as I, I speak to to go inside. Were you there when they apprehended the gunman? Yeah, I was. And what did you see? What what went down there? Yeah, he, he went down behind the the uh, 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 shed behind. Uh, he had already made his way all the way around. He was right there, ready for the the, the final shootout. And uh, I believe it was the detail that got him, uh, that, that neutralized him. I don't know if he's dead or not, because he fell behind the shed uh, right, right by us. So you saw him get shot? I, I, I didn't see that, no. I, I saw him being shot at, and I couldn't figure out why he wasn't. wasn't I, I, thought, I didn't know if you were missing him or what. I had a bulletproof vest on, or I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. He was described as a white male with a, a blue shirt on. Could you give any more of a description? No, that's that's all I can tell you. I'm sure it was very chaotic at the time. What was going through your mind? Uh, uh, is this real? Um, well, why don't I have my my weapon on me? Uh, you know, all these things go through your mind. Like, well, you know, the one time you're you're not prepared to respond, and what what can I do to to stop this? How can I help Steve Scalise, who was a man down out in the field all by himself? You know, we were we were helpless. And it was uh, just, uh, it's just a, a very tormenting feeling. And I understand there were people trying to climb chain link fences with injuries as fast as they could to try to get away, to try to find some cover, uh, just chaos. Yeah, it was chaos. That's probably the word of the day. Have you been able to contact your family? I did. I, uh, I called as quickly as I could. I tried to post on social media to try and tell everybody that I knew that I'm okay. And uh, I went on a local radio station as well to try and let my uh, my family and friends know. And uh, I'm I'm okay. 
Well, we are certainly very relieved to hear that you are okay as well. Uh, ABC News is reporting that at least five people were injured in this shooting, and it's, we're believing the lone gunman is included in that number, but that the House Majority Whip Representative Steve Calise is among those injured, but we understand that he is expected to recover from his injuries, and I'm sure you're relieved to hear that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, there's uh, another one of our staffers that I was very concerned about that was hit in the chest, and it just looked mm. horrific, and I thought uh, I thought that was life-threatening, and uh, but apparently he's pulling through. So, um, you know, but for the grace of God, uh, we, uh, we are all, I mean, uh, who knows what could have happened in that situation. So, um, boy, I, all I can say is go home and kiss your kids and hug your family. Absolutely. So understandable. And Congressman Mike Bishop, we're so glad that you're okay. And I know you want to get to your family and give them a big hug and a squeeze. And we're thinking about you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.